Hi everyone, so in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to set up a computer network with a dedicated DHCP server. So we're going to start off with setting up our environment with all the different PCs, switches and routers. So let's get started. Okay, so to get started, we're going to use my favorite router, which is the 2911. I just find it the easiest. It's got three connection ports, but I'm going to show you real quick the PT empty and the PT router. So these two, I'm just going to put them to the side because they like to load up first. Um, so we're just going to grab our switches. I always just grab the same one, but also I'm going to put a PT empty so that I can show you how that one works. So for this tutorial, we're just going to do two switches. Um, just for this tutorial, I think it's going to be a bit easier than having multiple devices that we've got to put in. So we're going to start off with, we need a server, which I'm just going to rename to be uh, the... DHCP. So we've got our two switches, our DHCP, and now we're just going to add in a bunch of computers. Okay, so we've got our different computers. I might just add another one over here just because why not? Okay, so before I connect these up, I'm just going to show you how these ones up here work. So if you wanted to use these, this is the PT router empty. And you've got all these different connections over here. They provide information. The one I like to use is the Gigabyte Ethernet network. So in this empty router, you can, actually it's going to tell me you've got to turn it off first. You've got to turn off with the little switch. Um, and you can drag into all of these ports here. Uh, same with the switch here, you can configure the different ways, your fast ethernet, your gigabyte, that sort of stuff. And this PT router comes with some already in there. If you turn it off, you can remove what you want. Um, and you can configure it that way. So I'm just going to delete them. And let's start drawing in our connections. I wonder if I can zoom in without everything being cut off. Let's see. Yeah, we can just zoom in enough that you can see everything a bit better. So we're going to start off with our connections. I'm just going to use the automatic one to do all these ones. I just find it to be the easiest option when connecting this way. So once you're done connecting, uh, let me select it, please. Okay, so and then we're going to go to uh, copper straight through. So I want to connect up the first switch with 0-0, zero zero. you can use any there, and 0-1 to switch to. So now I'm just going to put in a couple of text boxes just so we can clearly see what's happening. So switch 0 is over here, and it's going to have the IP address 192.168.10.1. It's also going to have the DHCP server. And it uses G0-0. So now I'm going to do the same over here. Switch 1. Uh, 192.168.20.1. And G0-1. Because it doesn't have DHCP server. So we've got those two put in now. And now it's time to connect up our server. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be connecting is the server. You don't want to start off putting in any IP addresses into the router. We start with the server and get that set up first. So you want to open up the server and you want to go into IP configuration. And it's very important. The server needs to be static because you need to have a dedicated IP address for it. After we set this up, all the other PCs will be a DHCP, which will allow them to automatically assign IP addresses. You need the server to stay the same. So we're going to put in here because this side of the switch is .10.1. So for the server, we are going to give it an IP address of 192.168.10.2. This sets the default to be the first connection on that switch. And then we want to do default gateways 192.168.10.1. Okay. So we have now set up the default address, static address, for the DHCP. So now you want to move over to services. I'm going to press DHCP. So we're going to start off with the first default server pool and we're going to change this to be switch one. 
we want to give it you could also give this a different name but we're going to do switch one and switch two because we're using two switches um also all letters in the name so the default gateway for this one we want to set it to be 192.168.10.1 now it's important the start ip address for this side needs to be three because we want the we've set the dhcp server to be two which is the first device connection so you want the starting ip address for this switch to be three so that every device after that is assigned a different ip address to the dhcp we're going to set the maximum number of users to 20. I mean, you can set that to whatever you want, but that's just what we're going to do. And you want to press, I'm sorry, add, because it doesn't like you to change the server pool. Uh, you need to also make sure you have that switched on. That's important. Both switched on. And now we're going to be adding our second one, which will be for switch two. Oops. So now we want to change it to be switch two. The default gateway is 20. I'm going to change this to be 20. Now on this side, because you don't have a dedicated server, you can have it start at two because whatever device connects first can be two because there's no server there to be a problem. So now you want to press add. So you've got server one, switch one, switch two set up and you've just got the default server pool that just default in there. So now we can work on configuring the router. So now we're going to be configuring the router. So you want to click into router and you want to go to the CLI. I'm going to type no because we want to get started to do our own configuration. So we're going to connect up switch one, which is the G0-0. Remember if yours is different, you want to put in a different bit of information. So I'm going to type enable conf T. Now in here, we want to do int J G, sorry. 0 dash 0. So now we're into the interface for the connection with the switch one. So we want to do IP address 192.168.10.1255.255.255.0. Enter. Uh, now you want to set the IP helper address. So IP helper dash address 192.168.10. 10.2 now this is the static address that we gave to the server if you're using a different ip address you just need to tweak it to the ip address that you set to be static in the server so we're going to enter that now we want to type no shutdown followed by do write memory and then exit now we're going to repeat so we want to because we're still just we're still in the configuration, so you don't have to go into enable conf t. You just have to exit out of configuring that IP address. So now we can go into the next one. So we're going to do int g. Move over here. So this one's 0 1. So we want to do g 0 1. A handy tip if you use your up arrow, you can go up to the ones you've put in previously. So then you can just go across and change the IP address instead of you having to retype it all out again. So now you want to press enter and now you want to go back and you also want to add in the IP helper address, same as last time, enter, then no shutdown, do write memory, exit. Now I'm just going to exit it completely and just to be safe, I'm going to write, write memory again I just make sure everything's configured and saved. So now we have our connections done. If we fast forward a little bit, everything should be working. So now we need to go and configure all the PCs. Okay, so now we're going to go into each of these PCs. You want to go to desktop, IP configuration. They all come default on static and previously you would have put in the IP addresses, but this time you're going to go to DHCP. I'm going to see if it will connect. Yep, it's given us an IP address. So now we want to move on to the next one. And you just want to repeat this process each time. Go through. It's helpful just to check and make sure. It's a bit. It's giving it four and then gone up to seven. Still the same one, so that's fine. It automatically assigns IP addresses. Um, 
You could close out of this window if you wanted, but I think it's important just to check and make sure that it connects before you exit. So it looks like everything is connecting up correctly. So everything's gotten its IP addresses. So now we're just going to come down here and you can just press fast forward and it just, you know, runs through the connections. So it's now run through the connections and we're going to start testing it. Okay, so let's run some checks. Let's open uh, PC1 and let's try ping 192.168.10.1. Let's see if we get some results. Yep. Yeah. Let's see what happens if we ping the server. I'm actually curious. We've got some results. And I think the other PC is four. Yep. So that little network there is working. Oops. Oh, desktop. And we're going to try over here 192.168.20.3. Yep. Four. Cool. So they're all working in their own networks. So each network is working. So now we're going to do another test within simulation. So you can test out the devices in uh, simulation to be able to see the different packet headers. So if you open up any of your computers and you just come over here and you go to change it to static and then back, it won't update here because you're in simulation and the simulation is paused, but you can come in here and see that this is an outbound packet header and you can look through the different information in here, the destination ports, the source ports, and what's happening within your little network that you've made. Um, and then you've got this one as well. So that's how you can create them, uh, but it won't automatically update with this address in because you're in simulation and the simulation is paused. So if you go back to real time, it's now gotten its IP address back again. So this is in real time. It comes in quickly and it actually will give you different addresses at times. Sometimes it's the same, sometimes it's different, and that's how it works uh, because it automatically assigns the address to the devices as they connect. And then once they've disconnected, the devices can, each time they reconnect, there's a different IP address. That's how it works so that you can have different devices connecting at different times. That's also why you have the server being static so that you can call the server in other switches um, by its set address. Uh, so yeah, so that's how you can set up a server in Cisco Packet Tracer with different switches. If you wanted to add in more switches, you would do the same process of configuring the router. And each time you configure to add the next switch with its connection, you also add in the IP helper address, which is for the DHCP, DHCP server. So that's how you can configure multiple switches with multiple computers in Cisco Packet Tracer. I hope that helps.